Hello, so another episode of Muscles and Nonsense. My name is Thomas. I am the host. Uh, I am very excited to have Jack on. I followed Jack on social media for quite some time, and then I bumped into him at the UK DFBA in 2020, I believe it was. Um, and I was almost a little bit starstruck. I was going to call you Ryan and introduce you, introduce you as that, but we know your name's Jack. So Jack is online coach, um, huge social media following, and we'll maybe tap in and talk a little bit about that. Uh, great guy, always replies to messages, um, unbelievable caliber of content, and uh, I'm excited to just get on here, riff, chat about a few different things, and, uh, and, and just get to know you a little bit better as well, I suppose. So, Jack, if you could just give us a little bit about yourself, kind of where you maybe you started and where you're at now, um, I'm excited to hear it. Sure. So, yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me on the podcast. It's, it's an honour. Um, I, I feel a bit like, almost like imposter syndrome, you know, when someone asks and, and kind of like tries to tap into my brain. So, uh, pretty cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, in terms of like who I am, where I started, so... Uh, yeah, I've been in the fitness industry now for a, for over a decade, which is not really that long if you look at people like Jeff Alberts and stuff like that, which is which is cool. Uh, uh, but yeah, I basically started just to try and get a bit jacked because I was always the skinny kid, and that's basically who I help now. Um, is pretty much me like ten years ago, which is why I feel like when we're on social media and I'm talking about certain situations, it's like I am literally talking about me when I was a kid. Um, or when I was like 16, 17, right? So it's so easy for me to talk about certain situations because I've just been through all of that shit. Um, I was a engineer, a CNC engineer. So basically I, I was doing that for a, around like 10, 10 to 12 years ish. Um, and basically it was just one of the things where I had financial security, um, went through the ranks in terms of apprenticeship and stuff like that, really hated it obviously started to do coaching on the side because I saw my own changes, which is obviously, I think that most people go into coaching because they've seen their own change in their physique, start to help people, start to really fucking like helping people as well, realize that shit, like working is actually meant to be a little bit of fun. It's not necessarily meant to turn up to a job and go like nine to five, tick a box, wait for the weekend, go and get smashed, repeat. Um, I wanted like as soon as I had like the taste of that for a bit, I was like, shit, this is what I want like want to do for the for the rest of my life. I want to have time freedom. I want to help people as much as I can. And since then, I've been on the endeavor to obviously go full time with it. Um, and I've been doing it now for a year and a half full time. Online coaching as a whole, I've been doing it for just over nine years. So that's basically me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's class. I can also remember as well, like. Because I think I'd been following you for a while, and it was a little while... Was it a little while after you... No, it was just before UK DFBA that you were able to go full-time, wasn't it? Yeah, so I... In 2020. <laughs> I handed my notice on, on peak week. Um, so the second <laughs> show that I did, it was like I handed, handed over my notice. I was just like... it. I, I was actually coached by uh, Steve Hall at the time, and he was like, just remain stressed, like, just go like, really stress-free. We obviously want <laughs> this week to be as stress-free as possible. And I was just like, on the Monday, I was like, there's my notice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, so for the Gen Pop clients that are listening, peak week is a week that is right before you're away to step on stage. Some people take an approach where what they do is they deplete themselves, so they take down as much, they take down carbs as much as possible, they zap as much energy out of the muscles, and they like it, it gets called like a flattening, like it makes them look flat. And then what they start to do is they reintroduce carbohydrates, uh, some fats, and it makes the muscles look bigger and more poppy. Um, that week is mainly about you have done all the hard work now, just relax. <laughs> and what Jack done is quit his job. <laughs> Put all that pressure on himself. <laughs> I bet you felt better. Like I bet after competing and everything, it felt unbelievable. Or was it still a bit daunting? Um, yeah, I mean, so I I basically handed in my notice. That was the lot. That was the last week. So basically, you only had a week's notice. Well, then I basically left my job. Then the week after, so when I basically competed on the Sunday or something, the week after I went to Paris. So <laughs> it was a bit like. I did peak week, I had the show, went to Paris, and it's kind of like, I got back, I was like, oh, what the fuck have I just done? Like, it's mental. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a bit daunting, but I mean, like, uh, yeah, 
paid off, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And and how long have you been bodybuilding for? Like, how long have you done bodybuilding, men's physique, preps and things? Um, prep, actual preps was like, that was my first ever um, season, last season. But I'd got to that, like, body fat percentage, like, three or four times before. And it was like, I just did it to go on holiday yeah, yeah. and fuck around with the lads and stuff. It wasn't ever to... I could have easily have tanned up and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I'm not too sure why I didn't, to be honest. Um, but yeah, the last, yeah. or yeah, whenever I did it before 2021, I was like, right, let's step on stage. We've done, I, I did basically everything, every single time I got that lean. Um, I just never put on the shorts. So yeah, it was just one of them things that it was kind of like a gradual progression. It's always something that I wanted to do. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you start on the 2nd of January, you start your next prep for 2023. Mm -hmm. Do you have your shows picked out and planned already? Um, yeah, uh, we've got the UK DFBA on the, I think it's the 28th of May, and then possibly go to uh, the World, which is in Manchester, I believe, uh, in June. That's a quarter by qualify. Um, well, obviously, you know how much that depends on many different factors, whether like, who turns up and yeah, all that stuff. Um, so it's kind of one of the things where it's like, yeah, that's, I could have one show, I could have two shows this year. Um, essentially this year is all about like, cause my ultimate goal is to be a pro. Um, this year is realistically about where am I like now? Uh, how was the last two years been in terms of the yeah. off season? And then from there saying, right, uh, <clears throat> kind of when do we go again and stuff like that, right? So yeah. Or am I good enough? Yeah, now? yeah. That's cool. I, I, it, it looks like, mate. It looks like this off season's been extremely productive. Like you look bigger everywhere, apart from your waist. You have a tiny little waist, so. Yeah, I think it's um, definitely going to comparing this off season to, uh, to the last off season. It's kind of like the last off season was pretty much full fledged lockdown. So yeah. if I didn't. If I didn't improve <laughs> this time around, then it's like, Jesus, like, what have you done for the last two years? So I kind of had, I, I had high hopes and obviously it's paid dividends and obviously training at a gym like the coach and then training at now Kratos, which is a bit closer to me, which is fantastic. It's kind of like, how can you realistically not grow? Um, and yeah, good. Yeah, I suppose I didn't even ask that. Like, where, where is it you are based? Like, where do you stay? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm in the Cambridge area, uh, actually like St Ives, Huntingdon area. Um, the coach was like Milton Way, which is like Cambridge Way, which is about twenty minutes away from me. Uh, Kratos, the new gym, is actually like about forty yards away from my house. So, uh, oh, brilliant. Yeah, more than ideal, especially when you're like busy with work and stuff like that. You don't really want to be spending two or three hours out the house every single day. Um, so yeah, that's that's more than no. ideal here. So. Is there is there quite a big bodybuilding scene down there? Um, there wasn't. I'd say in the last three or four years, I'd say that especially the natural scene um, has really taken that that step up. Um, I don't know why. I think yeah. maybe potentially like natural bodybuilding is is just potentially a a thing that's just becoming more and more accessible to people, which is good. Um, I don't know whether it's like the sea bomb effect where people. Uh, seeing C-bomb and then basically be like, I want to go to the gym. And then it's kind of like from there, you obviously start naturally and then kind of find people in the industry who are natural and then go that way. I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, it's it's taken off, which is which is great. Um, I think that obviously there's a lot of benefits, not just with bodybuilding, obviously just general fitness, right? Just going into the gym and being like resistance training, whether that's from a physical or mental health perspective. But um, so it's kind of good to see. Um, I think like back in our day, um, <laughs> I think it was more so towards going out every single weekend and getting absolutely fucking wasted. But I think nowadays it's kind of yeah. gone more so towards like people going to the gym, which is, yeah, which is sick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th this is kind of something that I was talking to someone in the gym about the other day. He was talking, he's gone from like, he's gone through like the full route. And I don't know if maybe you've done the same thing. Like I was a, uh, like, meet at the park, six in the morning, personal trainer. Like I done that. And then I moved into like, I moved into, I went to college. I got a bit of strength and conditioning background. So I then started to work with athletes, which really did leapfrog me a little bit. Um, 
But I feel like what a lot of PTs are doing now is they do their level three qualification, then they're a prep coach. Mm. Have you noticed over like the past, like your 10 years, that clients almost, I feel they almost leapfrog like the, the obvious steps to take of like, maybe just do a little bit more exercise, maybe lose a little bit of body fat, maybe build a little bit of muscle. And like, they go from that, now it's like far more like photo shoots, stepping on stage, do you do you see that as well? Yeah, I think that I think that ultimately yes, people have got their goals. So I think yeah. people people are very selfish. Like let's not let's not beat around the bush. So I think it's a case of like you are somewhat being influenced by your external variables. Like you're following someone on Instagram and they kind of go the bodybuilder route. You might then go the bodybuilder route. You're seeing that like with the hybrid training in the minute, like functional fitness. Um, yeah, <laughs> people are switching goals towards like from bodybuilding, and then people are going from bodybuilding to like functional fitness. Then loads of people are going from there. I think that they're not really assessing their true goal. I think ultimately what will happen is is that they they'll just do their true goal anyway. So say for example, um, I love bodybuilding. My true goal is going to be bodybuilding, and I'll do that for the longest time. The people who potentially just want to lose a bit of fat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, might find something like functional fitness a bit more accessible because you understand yeah. like being in a bodybuilding gym is very daunting to that person so they might try something like um bodybuilding for a while they might find these prep coaches might do a photo shoot and stuff like that realize it isn't for them and then go backtrack towards that and they'll probably do that for a long long time um i think i think essentially what i'm trying to say is that i think you will always find your true goal because it's a, it's a very thing that you're going to sit to for the longest. So I think that people, were, like again, if you just want to lose a bit of body fat, I don't think you're going to be doing bodybuilding for that long. Um, I really don't. Yeah. I think you're going to be doing it for a maximum of like maybe two or three years and then you should give up. Um, same thing with like maybe the functional fitness route. Like I think ultimately you find your path. Um, it's just much like when you like probably first started um, when you were at school and, and a teacher comes up to you and says, what do you want to do when you're older? You're like, I don't fucking know. I'm 16. Yeah. Um, it's, the same, it's the same thing, right? But ultimately, you just find your way. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's funny you're saying that as well because that's what's... And this is maybe like... I don't want to say a world exclusive because I'm not freaking... I'm not anybody. Uh, after last season, I was like, right, I'm going to go into an off-season. This is me, this is me, this is me. Business took a weird turn. A few things happened within our like our, my own personal life, and I was like, Do you know what? Bodybuilding's not for me. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start taking that like hybrid approach. I want to lift weights. I want to. Someone's knocking on my window. One second, Lisa. Someone's at the front door. I think. What? Someone's banging on the window. Could you go check? <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> <It's> all right. <laughs> That's weird. Um. Uh, yeah, so I was like, I'm going to do this functional thing. I'm going to get into like, I'm going to run like an ultra marathon or I'm going to do like, I'm, I'm going to do some sort of like fitness goal, but I'm going to get myself to like keep the sit a certain amount of muscle in and keep doing it. Every time I tried to do a training session for this, it was just like, holy, right, come on. And I had to like really force myself. And then I like genuinely the whole year, like I wasn't excited about training. I wasn't excited about exercise. I was starting to like doubt that I wanted to do TS health and fitness. I was like, what the fuck? I don't know what's going on. And then um, I spoke with my previous coach and I was like, do you know what? I've actually had it in my head that I want to win like my category. I want to be a good men's physique athlete. Like I want to do bodybuilding. And I, I said, I was like, do you know what? Actually, even just saying it feels right. I was like, will you take me back on? Let's yeah. do it. Let's just go into it. Let's go into an off-season now. Let's let's go through a gaining phase or push-up or bulking or what everybody wants to call it. And I like, I'm, I'm going to compete again in 2025. And I'm like, it feels so like right to me. <laughs> and it's it's funny that you, yeah, you're saying I, like I think, you, think you figure out your goals. Will, it, it will feel right. Yeah, I think older me, older me will feel right because essentially it's like, it's, it's, Again, like I think your path has just been chosen, and that sounds like really spiritual, and I'm definitely not a spiritual person, but I just think that, like, when you love something and when that passion is there, it's kind of like it's just very hard to ignore. Like, again, it's very easy to say you want to do something, but then like your your goals and your actions will just misalign. 
like again, like you said there with your functional yeah. fitness, it's like I, it's very easy to say that you can. Oh, I'm going to do a multi, like ultra marathon, but shit, you've got to love doing that training because that's fucking tough. The same yeah. with bodyboarding. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. My, uh, it's funny, my cousin, she used to do women's bikini. And, and, I, and I remember being like, that's so cool. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. And we ended up, she came up and visited me. And we ended up getting absolutely bloated once. And I was saying to her, like, I, I think I could do it. I think I could do it. And she was like, look, body, you don't choose bodybuilding. Bodybuilding chooses you. And I can remember just being like, you're, you're, you're insane. But like, right enough, like, I do feel completely like engulfed in it now. Like now that I've done it, it's like, I want to do it again and I want to improve and I want to try it again and I want to improve and I want to try it again. It's incredible. I think it's cool. Yeah, I think, but uh, yeah, I so think I think bodybuilding is one of them things where it's like, you're, it's, it's very much linked to business. It's like, it's very much like you're always wanting to be better and you're always wanting to progress. You're never wanting to really stand still. You always wanted to beat yourself and it comes mm. with like discipline habits and stuff like that. And I think that, I personally fucking love bodyboarding. I think it's great. I think it's taught me so much about everything in, in terms of life. And it's, it's something that I'll always be thankful for. But yeah. 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 The thing that's really cool with you, and this is something that I definitely wanted to talk about is like, you are all in with bodybuilding. Like your business is completely around like your own training. You lead by example, you get a lot of guys into bodybuilding or at least some sort of like muscle gain and a fat loss, which is what bodybuilding is. But you still also have like a, a lot of life out with, and you're pretty good at sharing that on social media as well. Um, I think it's pretty cool that you're you're in fashion, you're in like your American sports, travel. Are you still reading as much as you were before? Um, not as much, but yeah. <laughs> what what was it that got you into like the fashion, American sports, and the other things? Was there like a transition or just a um, period of life or anything or? Yeah, I think it's like, like with with American sport. I think it's just like American culture. I think that I'll I'll be very very honest. I just don't like the British culture that much. Um, I've never really been. I've never really clicked with it. I don't know why. Um, I just don't like. <laughs> I just don't like. I don't like being British. I I I don't mind living here. Um, but like I. I would identify myself as like as like fully fledged American. Like I I, I don't want to talk like an American. Um, but at the same time, it's like I am obsessed with their sports. I'm obsessed with their culture. I'm obsessed with their music. And then from there, it's just like a gradual backtrack, right? Um, but like the like for me, the British culture is very like royalist, and it's very much like um, like Stone Island culture and stuff like that. And for me, it's just like. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know why. I just never clicked with it. Never ever clicked with it. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, as soon as I found like American hip hop and started to go that route, it's kind of like that's kind of what I, what I really fucking love. It's it's kind of like it's it's very weird. I I, I don't know like the root cause of it essentially. But like if I could move to America, uh, I probably would. To be honest, I don't think now would want to go. But yeah, yeah, I probably would. Yeah. Have Have you visited much of America? Yeah, so we've done, um, we did basically New York to LA for our honeymoon. Um, and then this year we did Miami and also Toronto. So yeah, like Canada, America. But I mean, Toronto is essentially American, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And if everybody that is listening that knows me will be like, oh, here he goes, here he goes. I actually lived, I lived in America for a year playing basketball. Yeah. Um, and like, as soon as I got there, like how warm and welcoming and how selfless that they all were was just yeah. unbelievable. It was, it was like unbelievable. Like it was almost like weird to me. Like I was like, you want to what? What? You want to come, you want to come like see me play basketball or like you're willing to invite me to spend the whole day with your family. Like just like random people, like from a church and things. It was just, I, I did like it. I liked a lot about it. I do. I can see where you, I do see where yeah. you're coming from. The drink culture here mesmerizes me. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think the service, like compared to here, like when you go to, out to a restaurant, is just fucking like phenomenal. And I know they get tipped, <laughs> so they've probably got an incentive. But 
Um, yeah, I just I just find the whole place like really fucking cool, and it's kind of like you could go to one state in America, and you can go to the next state, which is like literally a na- like neighbors, uh, neighborhood states, and it completely yeah. it's actually completely different. It's like going from like Italy to Greece. It's like it's just completely different. Um, yeah. So yeah, and every opportunity that I can take about getting away from this country, then I take it. <laughs> That's why I travel a lot. Yeah, you do. You do travel a lot. Not like freaking ex- but you go like and you always go to beautiful places as well is there anywhere like in europe that you would recommend traveling to or you, you've really really liked yeah there's there's a few we went to seville uh this year which was actually for my cousin's wedding he he married a civilian which sounds like a civilian but yeah married to someone from <laughs> seville and the the place was just epic like unreal like really fucking cool. yeah and obviously, if you go to Spain, it's kind of like you assume Spain was like Benidorm, which is like pretty much Newcastle, if I'm honest, um, and like Malaga and stuff like that. But like, if you <laughs> if you go to somewhere like Seville or somewhere like that, then it's kind of like it's it's a bit more of the Spanish the Spanish culture. Um, but yeah, I, I, that that's a really cool one. That's a, that's one that no one really talks about, but that that was low key really impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess like what I'm trying to get at here is like a lot of people I think do just think like bodybuilders have to be committed, which which you do, but commitment doesn't mean that like you are completely engulfed by it. Yeah. And another thing that I think you're really good at is when you're away, you'll share like here's like my quote unquote hacks or here's some mm-hmm. top tips to like get through being on holiday. Um, yeah. Does do you find that like going away yourself and then showing clients puts them at ease and pulls them away from being like engulfed by it? Yeah, I think that there's that aspect because essentially it's like what every single phase that my client will ever go through in terms of bodybuilding, I've gone through. I've gone through fucking yeah. everything that they'll ever go through. I've been through a fat loss phase. I've been through a mini cut. I've been through maintenance phases, massing phases. You name it. I've probably been through every single experience apart from sticking needles in my ass. That's it. Yeah. Um, I don't take on clients who are enhanced, so that's a pro. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like when you go to certain places, it's like the other day I, ha- I had a client who went to Budapest and I'm saying, I'm in the check-in, I'm, I'm talking to him saying, it's very, very hard to get protein in Budapest. You're going to have to take protein bars and you're going to have to take shakes and stuff like that. Lo and behold, guess what? Very hard to take to, to get protein there. He's like utilized shakes and he's used protein bars and stuff like that. And he's taken it. And it's just like, it's kind of like really cool because essentially like we can, we can do that. It's like, oh, okay. Like in, in this place, in this certain like culture, they like to do this and they like to do this. So here's how to attack it and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily, I'm going to these places for that specifically. I'm going there to obviously experience yeah. a different city, culture, whatever. Um, but yeah, like you, you get some some things away from that. I'm 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 always like blown away as well when I go to different cities because it's essentially it's like you just feel like such a fucking small person in like this city. Like if you go to somewhere like Toronto, for example, and you're looking down when you're in the CN Tower, you're looking down at people and you're like, I'm nobody. Like I am nobody, and I love that yeah. because it's like I'm I'm going to continue to work my ass off until I am somebody. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try and kind of like transition two things here that just popped into my head. Like you are very good with social media, like really, really good. You're very good at showing like everything that's going on. Is there anything that like Jack likes to do that you don't really share on social media that you kind of keep separate at all? Is there like other things that you have in your life? Uh, no, I think that it's quite transparent and it, it, it does get a bit weird because like I'll see... Like if I go to a gym or something and someone will come up to me and it's like, oh, I love your social media and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, I love this certain thing. And it'll be like, I love your Cali, like my cat. And it's like, what, how the fuck do you know that? And I'm like, oh yeah, social media. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, some, some things, um, like I, I'm pretty much anything that I enjoy is like on social media, yeah, while yeah. my sex life. <laughs> that's, that's pretty yeah. much it. And I bet your girlfriend's grateful for that. Hey, you could tap into that and make loads of money with an OnlyFans account, I suppose. <laughs> exactly. I'll make millions. But that, it's, it's, that's exactly how I felt. I can remember like seeing you at the UK DFBA and I was like, am I like, 
I was like, he's a bit of a celeb. Like to me, I was like, he's a bit of a celebrity to me. I was like, do I am I allowed to just go up and say hello? I was like, I don't, I, I'm not sure. And then you walk past, and I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna say, all right, <laughs> yeah. You call me Ryan. So talking about like. Yeah, I, I did call you Ryan as well. So Jack's name on Instagram, I will tag everything underneath, but it's, is it Trainer by Rainer or Rainer Trainer? It's Rainer Trainer, isn't it? Right. Yeah, Rainer Trainer, yeah. Yeah, and I think I just, like, I think I knew your name was Jack, but I just said, I was trying to say, like, oh, you're Rainer Trainer, and then it just came out as, like, Ryan, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. There was like stuff I wanted to just like stand and talk to you about, and I was like, "This is I don't know him. He doesn't know me." But yeah, <laughs> so like the transition I'll kind of talk about is like you do also have like an eye for design, and that eye for design has helped you grow a pretty pretty impressive social media following. And I want to kind of talk about like the growth of that. I, I'm not trying to find out like your tips or tra- I, ju- I just I do just want to genuinely like, chat about it. So I looked right back. I went all the way back to your very first post, and you're stood with there's Christian Guzman and Max. Eh, I can never remember his last name. Yeah. And it was back in 2017. So five years of social media. Did you have a different account before you started this one, or is it just been? progressing through like have you used this for your business and social media for the entire time yeah so i had like a separate um account which was more so like just my like training log and stuff like that and i can't, i think that was just called like jr fitness or something and i i closed that down and basically it was like that's when i started to be more into like online coaching and stuff like that so yeah um so that that one actually grew to like seven thousand followers, and then basically I had this one, which is obviously like progress from there. A lot of the like following, uh, I don't know whether you're in the phase of <laughs> Instagram where you basically post like a bowl of cereal, and then it got like seventy five thousand likes, and the reach was unreal, and you get like tons and tons of followers, and that's what basically Instagram was back in the day. Um, I feel like nowadays it's just fucking a really slow process, which is why I think a lot of things are progressing in terms of like learning how to edit and learning all this different stuff about kind of like graphic design. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not, I'm not from that background. I've never really been an artist. Um, I'm pretty shit at art. I could draw a really fucking cool stick man, but that's about it. Um, and I think a lot of the design element, to be honest, and like the vlog style was, I used to absolutely, well, I still do, really binge watch uh, Casey Neistat. And if you look at how yeah. Casey Neistat edits and you look at how Casey Neistat is a storyteller, I I get a lot of my stuff and I'm influenced a little bit from, from Casey. Um, and I won't, I won't be ashamed in saying that, but... Um, I just think the way that he presents himself, I think the way that he lets you into his life, but not so much that it's like, like again, sex life, right? Family. Um, yeah. I think the way that he presents is, is is absolutely fucking spot on because you're so heavily invested in what he does. It's like from there, it's kind of like that's how you, that's how you kind of build a business, in my opinion. You have to have that like support network around you, like the community aspect, and then from there, it's just a case of like just trying to fuck with fancy edits and fonts and shit like that um but obviously like yeah, understand yeah. that you could be the greatest um storyteller you could be the greatest um videographer in the world and i see this a lot on social media people are very good at that element but their knowledge is shit so you have to have within an mm-hmm. online coaching perspective you have to have both otherwise you suck and you're just gonna let, get left by the wayside yeah. um, especially now unfortunately so yeah you kind of need a bit of everything you need to be letting people into your life you need to be um giving people value and then obviously you need the selling element um but i found the selling element and i still find the selling element very hard um which is why i have a team manager trainer account which is all it's mainly like my business account so i actually per day i post around four posts per day um and then stories alongside that so it's like almost a separate instagram account that i i use um so yeah, it's yeah. a lot of work, but that's what's necessary, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you, so like, there's a lot to it. And I think you're kind of like playing it down, like the amount and the, like the, like how good what you produce is. 
How long does it roughly take you to create one of your posts then? Let's say like one of your, cause you like, you know, you've got your training, you've got like almost like a training reel. You'll have like a reel that's maybe like the entertainment. And then you'll have like transformation things. How, like how long do each of those sort of take? Um, nowadays, like 15 minutes, like really not long at all. Yeah. Like back in the day, it used to be like four, five, six hours, but like, I'm of the kind of stage now where it's like create and go. So I don't, I, I just don't even look at analytics or anything else like that. I just don't care about that. I don't care if my thing gets like one view. I don't care. Um, it's more so a case of yeah. like create and go, create and go, next one up, next one up, next one up. I never look at what I posted. I always just keep going on and on and on and on. Um, and I think obviously that's beneficial, especially with like coaches nowadays are so hung up with like, Oh my, the algorithm, the reach It's like, fucking who cares? <laughs> Just get on with it. Get the next post up. Done. All you need to do is just put the fucking penny in the box. Don't worry about fucking reach and all that crap. Um, I think that the yeah. people who worry about reach all the time just never post anything because they're worried about reach. It's like, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, meta yeah. is going to do whatever the fuck it wants. Um, just keep posting. Yeah. Mate, it's like that story you're saying, like the top of CN Tower, like when you look down and you realize like, I am such a small little, like, I remember having a walk once. I was like doing a story complaining about the algorithm being like, oh, it's doing me over. It's doing me over. And as soon as I posted it, I remember just being like, my story, nobody's going to change it because I'm upset. And that's when I just kind of, I take the same approach as you now. Like mine's just very much like, I'm going to say something, you, you have it. I don't even put like, and I know this isn't great for it. I don't even put like a cover image. I'll try and find like the goofiest face that I pull in the video and make that the cover image. <laughs> yep. yeah, but I do feel like so less anxious post just posting and going. But mate, I wish I yep. see like the quality that you produce, like there, I, I am jealous. Like I wish I had, it's maybe just, I don't even know, prioritize it. Maybe I'm just paralysis by analysis. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I maybe just need to start playing about with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have like a tech, like a tick list every single day. So on my tick list every single day is I need to make a reel or I need to make a post and I need to do one on the other page as well. So my day is not complete um, until I do that. That's like big, a massive priority. And that's like I have a weekly to do list. I have a daily to do list. And until my daily to do list isn't ticked off, I, I'm not going to bed. And sometimes that means working 16 hour days. Sometimes that means like really long hours and stuff like that. But it's like, that's just how you keep like momentum going. Right. Um, is that you just, that's like how you also get better as well. You got to understand that if you, if you've scrolled back even two years ago of me posting, it's like, that's probably shit. And it's like, it just takes create and go, create and go, create and go to realize what is kind of working and stuff like that. And then you tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. But nowadays, um, like I don't even, f uh, I used to film on like a camera. Uh, so like one of the, like this Sony camera here. Um, and I don't think I've used it in about, yeah, maybe like a year. I use <laughs> this, your iPhone. Yeah. And it's something that I quite like to kind of port, like tell everyone it's like a lot of the content, like vlogs, a lot of the content, like everyone's worried about the, the fanciest equipment and the lighting and blah, blah, blah. It's like, just fucking post. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. What are some of like the, like I know that it was, you, you've already said that like it used to be that you could just post pretty much anything. It could just be a photo and you would get a big response. If you had the right hashtags or you had a popular hashtag, you would get a big following. But not in that sense. Like if you, like, is there changes with regards like what people are saying and posting and like the content that's being provided? Is there, Have you seen a big change over like the five years since this account's grown? Yeah, I think it's obviously more so video based. Um, yeah, I think that I think if you're posting like photos now and I tried it like a couple of days ago, and it's like if you're posting photos, it's kind of like, you're gonna have to do it via carousels because I think that Instagram is going more so towards time spent on the post rather than like a like. So I think that Instagram doesn't really yeah. care for likes that much now. It more so cares towards like people sticking to that photo or sticking to that reel. So I think the longer you keep them engaged, 
the more reach you'll inevitably have. And obviously that's changing all the time. So if you're listening to this in like 2024, yeah. that's probably going to change, right? So it's kind of like, yeah. And again, yeah. this is what I mean about not caring so much about the algorithm because it's just going to do its thing. And you just have to adapt. And if there's something that's popping off and then obviously you start to go that way, like I had a reel go to like nearly a million like views and it's kind of like, it hasn't done anything for my business, but I know what kind of works with the algorithm, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. But yeah, obviously, like realistically, even if I post a bowl of Cocoa Pops and I get like, I don't know, like 700 followers and I get all these like 75,000 like likes, it's like, are they paying customers? Probably not. It's like, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have to get that as well. Yeah. So have you, right. So Jack now has a following. It's like 22,000. It's up. It's like 22,000 odd, isn't it? On Instagram. I think so. Around that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Did you ever have a point where it like just rocketed or has it just always been like a steady increase? Yeah. It's always been like steady. It's never been like, one post has, has got me like significantly more i think um my highest yeah. ever like per, per day uh so like when i when i got my highest ever um like follow account whatever was uh the day of my show because i was shredded <laughs> so it's like there you go yeah. there's there's how to hack the algorithm it's just like starve for six months of your life and then get tanned up so there's there's a hack um so, but apart from that yeah like uh, it's, it's always been very, very slow, steady, but I think that, in my opinion, that's a better way to, to kind of run it, to go about it, because I think you see like people yeah. with loads and loads and loads and loads of kind of followers, but again, they're not turning into into like customers, right? And it's like if you build a community, yeah. if it's slower, then you're building a community. It's like you're reaching like twenty two thousand. I think you said right. I imagine if I had 22,000 yeah. clients, obviously that's, that's going to be near or impossible, but like, you know, every one of them knows yeah. my life and every one of them knows my name of the cat. And it's like, there you go. That's how to build a, build a business. In my opinion is, is to build a community. Yeah. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. I a hundred percent agree. I want to kind of touch back on cause the social media thing. I just, I needed to touch on it because it's, it's, it's not a common thing for people to have like that sort of size of following and, like, ha like again, have like the sort of, in my opinion, have the creative eye and create the content that you do. Like, I don't, I don't think it's common, so I did want to just touch on it. But I kind of want to come back to the the dieting and the fat loss, and maybe talk a bit about a few things that we've maybe touched on in messages back and forth. Is there anything that you've ever cropped up? Like, you've, you so you've dieted down like four times now to like stage lean, pretty much. Yeah, three, four times. Yeah. What have been like the what, like from like the first time you've done it to the last time you've done it, what are some of like the biggest differences with that? Yeah, I think, um, I think the length of the, the dieting phase, I think that at the start, it was very much like a 10 week cut. And now it's more so going towards like almost like a 30 week cut. And there's a big reason for that. Number yeah. one, muscle retention. There's a massive difference between weight loss and fat loss and weight loss. You could, you could take very aggressively, you could do it very aggressively, but you try and retain muscle being very aggressive with fat, like trying to be very aggressive with, with weight loss and yeah, you're not going to be in for a good time. Um, so I think the length, I think a lot more use of things like diet breaks and refeeds, I think that that's invaluable. And also um, just way less cardio. Like hardly any of my clients, unless they really, 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 really need it, um, have cardio in in their kind of program at all um so yeah we, we mainly run through steps and obviously diet and i think that's just to do with like managing fatigue like you got to think that who's going to be the most fresher is it going to be the person who's potentially doing like an hour a day on the bike or the person who's running their fat loss via things that are way less fatigue demanding right um it's probably yeah. going to be the person who who's, who's fatigue free. Right. So there's that aspect. It's just, yeah. I think more, more so a time thing. I'm more so a thought process towards fatigue management. Cause that's big. That's huge. That's the difference between you getting towards like 10% body fat and like 
six, seven. Um, I think one, like you, you need your head in prep. Like if you lose your head, yeah. because everything's fucked in terms of like you look stringy, you look poor, you look flat. If you lose that in prep, you are done. Uh, you can say goodbye to everything. You can say goodbye to muscle for for one, but um, yeah, I think yeah. that they're, they're two are like the biggest differences. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is there a see like even like so obviously you obviously do you diet back to back years or do you maybe go like say like 2019 you would diet 2020 off season 2021 diet is that like kind of how you run it or yeah i actually run and it wasn't by uh it was definitely by accident it's, it's about a year and a half so yeah that's basically how i how i run thing a year and a half then i'll, I'll basically diet and then i go for a significant dieting phase as well um in that off season i like to do like one cleanup phase mini cut just because um, I think it's quite beneficial just to kind of have that number one sense of appetite again because um, I do definitely yeah. struggle with obviously pushing on, pushing on weight is quite hard for me. I'm definitely what you classify as a quote unquote hard gainer. Um, but yeah, I think quite essentially it's just 18 months cut, see what's there, um, and then yeah, assess, go again. Um, but there's also some merit yeah. towards that, like and I, you probably found this in your prep is like the the post prep like rebound phase is like the best in my opinion. Everyone <laughs> hates it, like reverse dieting and stuff like that, because it's a very psychologically like it's very demanding. Coaching someone through like a reverse or a rebound is is, is tough, but it's where yeah. most people have the most gains. If you can control that out route, um, you're in for a fucking good time for the off season. Um, so and also with the dieting less aggressively in terms of having more time that out route at back into prep you don't want to be like like deep throating churros right you kind of want to be like yeah yeah you're, you're still on the ball you're still you're still psychologically there you know um so that also has merit yeah. in terms of like you just feel less fatigued like i remember being on stage and obviously uh posing last last uh year I remember being on stage and some dude was almost fainting next to me and he was like, oh, I just need a pizza. I need some this. And I'm just like, I feel fucking great. Um, yeah. And yeah, like it, it, it's just one of them things where I think, I think um, people focus a lot on trying to get the most shredded, but then just do it way too aggressively uh, with not enough time. So, yeah. 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 Okay. So for gem pop people, diet breaks are when, so to lose fat or to, when you are in a dieting phase, you have to be in a calorie deficit, which means you're taking in less energy than you like your body burns. A diet break would be when you would either bump it up to maintenance for, do you do like four or seven days, two days? How do you run your diet breaks? Um, we, I normally structure it within a day load, just like seven days. Yeah. So a diet break is like a long time away from, or like a, a prolonged period away from the, the diet or the deficit. A high day could be you just have one day where you bump someone up to maintenance again and see with your regards your refeeds. Do you just would you potentially just give someone a high day or would you give them just like a high calorie meal on top of? Yeah, I think that a few years ago I'd have just done a high day. However, yeah. um, now nowadays I'm also go towards a refeed and there's many different benefits from refeeds and, and high days and mainly it's from the standpoint of digestion if you give someone a high day when they're like super 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 lean digestive wise they are just not going to handle it that well so um and obviously we can talk about yeah. like how that works under like just total body stress but you tend to especially when you get closer towards prep just not be able to handle fatty foods um like especially with really really high fat really really high sodium um so we tend to yeah. just run higher days in terms of like refeeds so like just more rice or more of the thing that you've been eating the whole time within prep yeah um yeah so yeah. yeah and then a rebound and reverse diet when you've been in that deficit for so long you don't want to be dieting forever so what you want to try and do is you want to try and get to either maintenance or surplus so reverse diet and it's just gradually increasing those calories would you do that over daily do you do that like every couple of days or do you wait a week and then increase it a week and then increase it or is it just person dependent depend how they're they are rebounding 
Yeah, I think that if we're talking about like shows, I think I'm normally like plus uh, five to ten pounds straight off the bat, like of that weekend, and then basically yeah. from there reverse out. I think if they're just doing like just do a fat loss phase, I think you're you're actually fine to do just a reverse. Um, obviously, it depends yeah, on the yeah. severity of the fat loss phase and, and all that good stuff, but very generally that. Um, but yeah, I think that most people again just try and hold within that really tight window in terms of like their body fat percentage is ridiculous and they're trying to bump up like 100 calories per day it's like yeah that's not gonna happen you'll, you'll likely binge yeah i i tried to do that in 2019 when i dieted for a photo shoot and i was just binging every night pretty much like adding that a little bit so reverse diet means you just add say like 100 150 calories either day after day or like you do a week and then you add more calories a week and then add more calories and then a re recovery diet i've heard it it's like you just go straight to maintenance yeah. or even surplus, get that body fat back on and then just see where the person is after three, four weeks or each week and then just if you need to increase or pull it down. Um, and then I guess something that we should also touch on here is like for someone like, like Jack and I or someone else that's potentially dieted for a long time, they have what like a 3D MJ, they, they titled it like the foundation diet like what you just eat normally mm -hmm. and that's what you would like fall back to. So like you, like you were saying as well on your high days, you eat more rice. It's not like, Oh, go have fish supper or go eat like junk food. It's you eat more of what you're normally eating. So with us as well, we don't go from like fat loss phases to just like Joe blogs, 60% of the population's obese is diet, just yeah. eating crap. We will probably still maintain on this like, foundation diet idea of like they're our, our normal but more of it yeah. just so people don't think that there's yeah. like good bad on off it yeah does that a, make a sense Jack? Guys, i don't know whether you've had um or you've seen like kids plates they got or some kids plates have got like sections of their plate that's basically like protein carbs and then veg it's like that's pretty much what we fucking do yeah. to be honest yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but yeah, I so I, there was someone I jotted down there and I can't remember now. Uh, uh, so we, we're talking about all these things and they maybe do sound quite scientific to some people. Um, and something that we've messaged back and forth and you've done a really good post on it about this search for optimal. What sort of impact do you feel that this like scientific supported approach and then this idea of optimal because I think they're different things because I think this optimal is almost they're going they're trying to get like this point percent on everything as opposed to just like looking at the basics things don't change too much just get them very well yeah. do them very well yeah so I I really like the whole push towards optimality essentially what we're trying to do is become better bodybuilders and become way more efficient bodybuilders so look if we're if we are running at like 70 percent efficiency within our bodybuilding career and we can push that to 100 percent, you're obviously going to gain more muscle no one's disputing that yeah the thing is a lot of people who talk about that last little 30 percent a lot of the people who talk about that situation are talking towards people who are potentially gem pop. There's a problem. Yeah. If they're talking to us as like coaches and they're talking to people who potentially have been doing this for a long time to us, that makes sense to us. That's cool. The vast majority of people who go into the gym don't need to be doing this shit because essentially they need no. to nail that like 70% bracket which I, I'd say that a very small percentage actually does that. So here's where the problem lies. We're talking about like, we should throw out V bars. We should throw out barbell bench press. We should throw yeah. out deadlifts. We should throw out squats. All these different things that are deemed suboptimal. It's like, uh, I, okay, well, they are doing something and there's a difference between them being useless and you saying they're useless there's a difference between doing that and saying there could be a better option. Yes, agree. There's probably a better option. There's no doubt about that. But you can't say that stuff categorically doesn't work because it does. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of one of them things where I think that people just kind of forget who they're talking to. I think people yeah. are 
just don't know their niche. I think the people are very much just trying. I think nowadays, without sounding like very mean, I think people are just trying to impress their peers, and it's almost like a dick measuring contest. Like, look at how much I know about talk. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not who you're talking. To. You're not you're not talking about. Like people, people who are just going into the gym and just want a bit of bit more muscle don't care about the moment arm and the torque axis and fucking shit like that. They just want to get jacked, and there's yeah. a big difference. As coaches, as coaches, it's quite important for you to know that because it's very important for you to know and understand what you're taking your client through from that point of view, especially if they come to you with an injury. Very important, but the mm-hmm. the posts that people are making aren't keyed into coaches they're keyed into everyone there's there's a problem yeah 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 i i do i i 100 percent agree and it's funny that you're saying like those quotes because i actually went to a i'm not going to say who i went to like a a weekend and they were they were talking about it was all about foundations of biomechanics and exercise and they were talking and they were asking the crowd and they were saying like oh does everybody know what this is and everybody could just regurgitate what that was that equation or that's that that like the torque uh, moment arms they could they could regurgitate that but i just like put my hand up and i was like so what exercise does that relate to and the guy at the front was even a bit like oh well well it's 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 something else and i was like no but what what benefit then does it have if it's not related to exercise and they were like and then and i was asking people in the class when we got when we got put into the gym i was like so what do i have to look at for what, what am i looking at here and they would say it, like regurgitate the words. And I was like, but no, no, like show me, like show me what I would need to worry about. And I do, like, I think it is like, they were all trying to show off to the lecturers. Yeah. They were a bit, they were actually, the lecturers were actually a bit pissed off at me at the end as well. Cause I said to them, I was like, everybody can parrot what you've said, but I don't know if you've actually helped any of them as coaches. No, no, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's the poor part. There's that standpoint. And there's also like, if, you've been doing something for 10 years and I come up to you and say, what the fuck have you been doing for the last 10 years? You've been training suboptimally, you prick. What are you going to do? Like you're probably going to be a little bit demotivated, right? That's what's happening on social media right now is people literally going up to people and saying, you're a prick and you haven't been training very well. And it's like, fuck, you can't, well, you can't fucking say that. Like, it's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with with that. Like, and and I think it's very important to 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 um to to kind of almost try and nip that in the bud very soon, like very very quickly, because I think that that's, yeah, this is yeah. going to get very out of hand. Again, I I get where it's coming from. There's it's a very decent thing for the industry if you can encapsulate it. If you can say this is for this person demographic, not everyone. Yeah, yeah. I guess as well, like we're, if we if we stay on like the idea of social media, like things have to be extreme. If it's not extreme, it's not eye catching. It's not going to lure people in. Like I hate seeing all the arguments of like reps and reserve train failure. I, I, I just train hard. Like the research says, if you train close to failure, whether it's failure or not, like you're going to make pro. In fact, I actually think uh, Lane Norton put something out recently saying that there's actually no difference between. The amount of muscle gained from reps and reserve and training to failure. So do whichever one, ever, whichever one you prefer. <laughs> yeah. But saying well, that's I almost think, boring. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a, there is a slight danger by saying, and I fell into that trap with obviously being like from an RER background. Is like if you if you tell people to train with reps and reserve, and you go into the gym and you watch people train, they train with reps and reserve. So you're almost giving them leeway to train with reps, reps, reps in reserve, in reserve. So it's kind of one of them things where I'm very yeah. cautious about saying that now because it's like you could give someone the green light to train even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think also the like people like ourselves that have trained to failure that know what it is, like like you can still train hard like during a shit session. Like you can have a shit session. And the way I see it is if like if say that's your max and you leave some reps in reserve and that's where you're always going to and then you have a shit session, there's a good chance you're going to be there. Whereas if you push to failure, this is just my logic, and then I have a shit session, I'm only I'm pushing to there. So that's like my thinking, and it, it, your your opinion there on like telling someone that like 
you've never trained to true failure. But what I'm going to tell you to do is like stop three, four reps before what you think or you perceive as when it starts getting hard. And you'll know yourself as well. If you go to a gym, most people train to the point it gets hard and stop. And they've maybe got like 15 reps left. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's basically like a lot of my coaching where a lot of the coaching services is like form feedback and then just try and get people to an intensity level which is going to be productive and inducive for hypertrophy. That's basically what that is. And obviously just trying to refine exercise selection, then all of the cases, obviously there's a lot more to it, but that's at a primitive level. That's what a lot yeah. of our, our jobs are, is just trying to get you training very fucking efficiently. Mm. Mm. 100%. And something else that like I noticed on social media that you, you've touched on this as well. You've done it in your stories. Um, and there's an Instagram account that if anybody wants to follow, they're brilliant. I'm sure it's called Break binge eating or break the binge eating i'll attach it as well they actually shared a paper and i'm this is going to make sense in a second jack <laughs> they shared a paper about the impact that modifying selfies or editing selfies has on like uh body dissatisfaction and uh, like personal worth and you've done a thing recently so i messaged this account being like what do you think sort of impact using an ai uh, program to create a flawless version of yourself, making you look like a superhero. What sort of impact do you think that's going to have on you? And the guy actually replied being like, that would be fascinating to know. And it's like, like you were saying, that, like, or I mentioned there that like the fitness industry is so extreme and you meant, you touched on this. One week it's like, don't you dare edit your photos. The next week it's, look at my AI cartoon anime version of myself. And I, and it, I think it's brilliant. Like, I'm going to give you a bit of credit here as well. Like you don't bite to a lot of the trends. And I think that's, I think that's why I like following you so much. Genuinely. Yeah. However, you do need to get yourself a pair of Vibrams. <laughs> I'd rather train. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> but yeah. Mate, I know you're a busy guy and we've been trying. For... No, on you go, Jack. Sorry. With, with, with a lot of trends, though, you've got to understand that they are, if everyone's doing the trend, it's kind of like they're all merging towards the same thing, if that makes sense. It's like if you have 100%. a personal trainer, I like, I like to help, da, 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 and I like to do this, and I want five highly motivated individuals and stuff like that, and everyone else goes that way, it's like you're just like that other person, you know? And it's the same with trends. It's like if you consistently yeah. jump on trends, you are not, you're just a, a, a thing that just moves with trends and you're a thing that moves with other people. And it's like the people don't buy trends and moves with people, people buy yeah. you. So yeah, that's why I don't really bite on it. Um, I tend to be quite opinionated. I, <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, I worry that I'm getting old because the way I see it now is like people trying to be individual or like, okay, that group are being individual. I'm just going to copy the individual group. And then they dress the same, they speak the same, listen to the same music, they say the same shit, they post the same way on Instagram. Like, that's the way to be an individual, is to copy the group that are being individual. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But Jack, again, I, I do, I really appreciate your time. I know, I do know how busy you are. Um, and I do like to finish this podcast with one question, uh, and it does put you on the spot a little bit. <laughs> what do you think it takes to be a good man? Um... I think trust, I think that, I think that also being loyal and I also think being like authentic to who you are. Um, I think being able to love even if it's same gender and I think that having the ability to be loved as well is quite important so what i mean by that is men we are very much taught that we should be hard-headed and we should be the provider and we should be disciplined and we should be the breadwinner and all that good stuff but i think that essentially like if you are that hard-headed and you're not uh, like even allowed to talk about your emotions and kind of like almost opening up the the feminine side I think that that's where a lot of like mental health issues come from because you try and like cage it all in and you try and be this masculine, masculine person. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think a lot of that, 
Um, I think Mate, that's yeah. brilliant. Mate, that's a br- honestly brilliant answer. Because this podcast is called Muscles and Nonsense, or Man, I ask everybody that. And, and honestly, every time I get something new, and that idea of being able to love, receive, and give, I think that's fucking fantastic. But Jack, honestly, thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. I'd love to get you on mid-prep at some point as well, find out how you're feeling, because there's a bunch of things within prep that we spoke about before that we didn't even get touched on. I'd love to talk about them with you when you're actually in them and feeling them if you if you would be happy to come back on. Sure. I'll Put pressure on you there, I'll ask you online. Unless you have that face, it'll be like a skull. <laughs> okay, Jack, right, I'm going to stop this. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Good. An honor.